This is a bottle of 1919 Springbank 50 year old. The whiskey inside it was distilled 102 years ago and in this video we're going to take a look at what makes it so special in its history. Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel and this is a video that we've been saying that we're going to be making for a long time and today is the day that we make the video and we've got a truly iconic bottle of whiskey up on the cask and it's a Springbank 50 year old 1919 vintage so before we get into the history of the bottle let's take a look at the physical bottle itself now this is what's known as the pear-shaped bottle and it was used by Springbank in the 1970s and 1980s and it was used to bottle anywhere from 12 to 50 year old whiskey. You get the 12, 15, 21. I think there was like an odd 33 year old as well, which is quite an unusual age statement. Now, because this was released in the 1970s, the volume and the ABV are expressed slightly differently. So it's 26 and two third fluid ounces and the ABV is 66.3 degrees proof. Now, what that translates to by modern standards is about 37.8% ABV. Now, what's interesting about that is that that is below the threshold of the modern Scotch Whiskey Association regulations, which say that, you know, a spirit has to be over 40% ABV to be legally called whiskey. Now, this Springbank 1919, it's bottled at 37.8% ABV, and it's the same as the Macallan 50-year-old anniversary malt that was released in the 1980s. That was also below that 40% threshold. Now, there's no details of the vintage on this label. You've got the age declaration here, over 50 years old on the neck on the little slip label. We've got this gorgeous black and white label on the front here with the sort of the, the, the orange thistle with like a typewriter style font on the bottom there of the ABV and proof uh, and, and volume, sorry. And on the back, it's just a plain label on the back. Now, as you can see, it doesn't mention anywhere that it's from the 1919 vintage, but we do know that this for certain, this is from the 1919 vintage because it was released with a letter. Now, we talk about this book a lot on the channel so if you don't have a copy of Emmanuel Dron's book collecting scotch whiskey i mean look ours has been used that much that the spines you know come off and the front and back covers have come off but on here you see all the you know the relating paraphernalia that was released with the bottle in the 1970s and importantly there's a transcript here of the letter that springbank sent out when the bottle was released and it says that the whiskey was distilled and filled into casks. So it was distilled and then it was filled into cask 715 on the 29th of December 1919 and bottled on the 25th of November 1970. So this really is a historic bottle. And we're now going to look a bit more about the history of this bottle and what makes it so interesting. So to truly appreciate how old this whiskey is, we need to sort of put it into context. Now, this whiskey went into the cask on the 29th of December, 1919. So the whiskey was probably distilled several days prior. It was batched up and it probably would have gone into the receiving tank and then it would have been filled into the cask. So they tend to batch the production of up, of the spirit up and that filling date is the AYS. It's the age of the youngest spirit and that's the day that the whiskey went into the cask. Now, you know, to, to start thinking about the history that this bottle has seen, the barley that was used to grow, you know, the seeds that were used to grow the barley to make this whiskey will have been harvested in 1918 while World War I was in, you know, un underway. And, you know, when it was bottled in 1919, World War I had only just finished and the Treaty of Versailles had only just been signed. And it's, it's, it's fascinating to think of the life that it witnessed while it was in the cask as well. So during this period that this whiskey was maturing for that 50 year period, you know, it witnessed the whole of World War II. It witnessed the first nuclear bomb going off and you know, the first nuclear bombs being used in anger and in war. It, it, you know, it witnessed the, the moon landing in 1969 and it lived through the Vietnam War as well. So just while it was in the cask, it's seen one of the most incredible periods of history and then since it was in the bottle you know it's been in the bottle another 50 odd years it's seen an amazing amount of events happen as well you know it's seen six stock market crashes you know black monday the dot-com bundle it's witnessed the dawn of the internet witnessed so much and it's in it's you know it's a whole, you know this whiskey was distilled 102 years ago and you know another fascinating thing about this is that it was distilled 
or you know it was went into the cask in 1919 which is also the same year that the Volstead Act was passed in America which brought into the you brought us into the prohibition era So as we've mentioned, in 1919, the North American Congress passed the Volstead Act, which brought about or the, the prohibited the sale and consumption of alcohol. Now, doing something like that, rather than sort of decreasing the demand for alcohol and whiskey in particular, the, it saw demand absolutely skyrocket. And this is interesting and it ties into the region where the Springbank Distillery is, which is Campbelltown, because Campbelltown's on the very west coast of Scotland. And it was ideally placed to service this growing appetite and need for alcohol by the US. And because it was on the west coast of Scotland, it was very easy to ship it over to the US. Now, for better or for worse, a lot of the sprit, you know, the Campbelltown distilleries, they tended to not really give a damn about quality at that time. So they would increase the production speed, which reduced in a lower quality spirit. And as a result, by 1934, it was only Springbank and one other distillery that remained. And Springbank to this day, they distill very, you know, the very small quantities. The Springbank distillery has always had this hyper obsession with the quality of their whiskey and that's brought them to the position that they are today they survived prohibition this whiskey survived the whiskey lock how this cask slumbered for 50 years undisturbed in the warehouse before bottling it is phenomenal because you've got to remember in the 1970s when this was released it, single malt whiskey wasn't even too much of a big thing it wasn't until 1963 that the first single malt whiskey was marketed to the UK and that was Glenfiddich so this was incredibly pioneering of Springbank at the time and I'd love to know the story of how this cask was found and perhaps it was just overlooked at the back of the warehouse Now, if you're a regular on this channel, you'll know that we like talking about pricing paradoxes and rebottlings. And another key concept is the value of the whiskey and the value of the bottle. And I think the Springbank 1919 50 year old is one of the best examples of this because even, you know, we've got this up at just under 39,000 pounds and by some respects, that's very good value for money. Note that I'm not saying it's cheap because it's not cheap, but the value there is quite high. And, and why can we sort of say that? Well, in the 1980s, there was a rebottling of this whiskey. So Springbank released a limited edition of 24 bottles, rebottling this exact whiskey. And on the label, it said 1919 in very big letters. And that bottle, it's just a tall round bottle. We'll put it on screen in a moment was sold by Sotheby's in 2018 for 266,200 pounds. 266,200 pounds. And prior to this, that new tall round bottling had held the Guinness World Records for the world's most expensive bottle of whiskey. Now, this is insane because even at the listing price that we've got at of just under 39,000 pounds, you know, you're saving 227,000 pounds on the whiskey. And, and this is what's an interesting point. There's, we, we're sort of starting to come to this conclusion that there's two different prices for any bottle of whiskey. You've got the price of the whiskey and then you've got the price of the bottle. Now, the, you know, if you look at our private eye video, we did the world's first tasting notes on Macallan private eye, so it's well worth checking that out. We talk about how this pricing difference can occur because people collect these bottles. They don't care about they might care. There's not many people that are going to open this bottle and buy it because it's the world's best whiskey. They're going to buy it because of what it represents. It's a really rare snapshot of history. It's 102 years old, the whiskey inside of it. It was distilled 102 years, 102 years ago. It's incredible. And, you know, not only is it value for money compared to this 1919 bottling, which is £227,000 more expensive, this Springbank 50 year old, the 1919 50 year old, it's also relatively cheap compared to other. 50 year old bottlings from the same period. So we covered another video about the Balvenie 1937 50 year old on this channel. And that was on our website as well. And we sold that, I think it was listed at about 45 or just over 45,000 pounds. And as we've mentioned before, the Macallan anniversary malt, the 50 year old, you know, I think that sold for almost 100,000 pounds in the past. So yes, it's an expensive bottle of whiskey, but perhaps it's a bottle of whiskey that the market has overlooked 
I certainly feel that there's a lot of potential for this bottle, especially when you consider the value of the whiskey in the other bottle, the 1919 Tour Round bottling that was sold compared to this. And it's, it's just incredible. So there we have it. It's the Springbank 1919 50 year old. If you want any more information about this bottle or you'd like evaluation on your bottles of whiskey, get in touch and we'll be happy to help.